Hi guys, it's Kelly Latavola here and I am back with another video for Neat and Tangled. This is for the new release and I'm actually using two new sets. It's the Friendly Florals and the Hello Spring set. Um, I typically tend to do one layer cards that are really uh, clean, and, clean and simple with just kind of like one focal point. And so um, these friendly florals, they're just really beautiful images. There's multiple images in the set and I thought it would be kind of fun to do uh, like a watercolor background. So I'm working on Canson watercolor paper here and I have the largest image in the set and I'm starting with that in the center. So basically I'm almost kind of creating my own pattern paper. Um, the stamp uh, or the ink that I'm using is Barely Beige ink from Simon Says Stamp. This is going to help give me a no line coloring look while still maintaining the lines enough that I can see where I'm painting. Once I have my main image down, I'm going to go ahead and start building out from there. The reason I start in the center is because you don't want to stamp all around your edges and then not be able to fit anything in your middle. It's better to start in the center and then as you go out to the edges, you don't have to worry about like having gapping or anything like that. So I'm stamping two of the other flowers and then there's um, some like branches and leaves. I'm just going to uh, stamp this little berry branch in there to just kind of fill in the space. And all of these I'm stamping twice because that ink is so light, I wanna be able to see it. So just, you know, I have that, that center portion stamped and then I'm gonna start building uh, the outside edges. You always wanna start with your largest stamp first because that's obviously going to take up the most room. And then, um, you know, for so starting with the largest, working out to your smallest, that way you can fill in any gaps that you kind of see. The other thing um, with kind of making your own uh, pattern paper or building a background like this, you want to make sure that you're letting some of the images hang off the edge. Why is that important? It's important for the look of continuity. So if you want it to look like a piece of pattern paper, um, you know, you wouldn't cut a piece of pattern paper perfect. I mean, I wouldn't anyway. Um, and so there's going to be some places where you kind of cut through the image. Um, so here you can see I have three different stamps. They're all hanging off the edge to fill in those gaps and then just have that um, continuity to the, the background. So I'm going to stamp those down and then I'm going to go ahead and finish out the stamping. Here is the whole background stamped. I'm zoomed in super, super tight here uh, because the last time I asked, you guys said that you would rather see the painting up close versus being able to see any of the color palette. So I am working with Daniel Smith watercolors. That's what I have here in the um, my palette. It's a palette from Ranger actually for alcohol inks. I love it for watercolors because it's got a lid on it. That makes me happy, happy, happy. So then when I'm done, I can just close the lid. My inks dry in their little spots and I can reactivate them with water whenever I'm ready to paint again. So tip number th three, two, three. I don't know. I wasn't counting. Um, I should have been, but I wasn't. Um, so now getting into the painting, usually I do a very, very controlled watercolor. Um, so I pick up a little bit of pigment, I put it down, I blot off my bristles, and then I go in with um, a slightly damp brush and move that pigment around. Here I'm doing a totally different approach. Um, the first one I described to you is a wet on dry technique. This technique is a wet on wet. So I'm going in with clean water first, painting in the area that I want the pigment to be. And then I'm dropping pigment into kind of the pool of water that I have. This gives, it's not as controlled, so it's not as detailed, but it gives a completely different look. It lets the water do the work for you. Um, so I'm just going to drop in some pigment where I want it to be the most concentrated. And then almost in, I think in almost all of these, I use two different colors because I don't know, I just like the way it looks. You know, I like when the, the green mixes with the yellow or the pink mixes with the purple, like whatever, um, you know, I happen to be coloring. So um, that's how I'm approaching this whole background. It is going to be a little bit messier. Um, as far as the look of it, but I'm okay with it because it's an entire background. It's not one focal point. The other thing is, as you can see, as I'm moving along here, um, I'm doing one item at a time. So I went in and did all of the centers first. Now I'm going back and doing all of these particular leaves all at the same time. And this just helps me um, so I don't miss anything. 
Um, so that's just one of the ways that you can approach it. You can certainly um, paint one flower at a time, but you don't want to work in um, two areas that are wet. Like you don't want to work next to each other um, because they'll bleed into each other unless that's the look that you're going for. And later on when I do the full flower, you'll see that I just paint the whole thing in. Uh, because it didn't matter to me. I didn't need the petals to be separated. Um, but for uh, something like this, where I don't want the leaves to bleed into the leaf next to it, um, I'm going to do all of them um, at the same time so that they are separate. And then it gives the other ones a chance to dry before I move into the next area. The next tip, which is now number, I'm going with four, um, <laughs> is if you want a cleaner look, so basically when you do this technique, you're trusting that the water is going to carry that pigment um, throughout the full um, image. You know what I mean? So out the, throughout the full leaf. Sometimes that doesn't happen because you're painting with clean water. It's hard to sometimes see that you don't get it all the way up to the edge. So what I do when that happens is I, I drop in the color. I let them just kind of do their thing for a little bit. And then after I'm done painting all of the items, I will go back in with my brush um, that just has a little bit of clean, clear water on it. And then I will stretch the pigment out until the edge of the leaf, petal, flower, what have you. Um, and the reason that I go in with my brush slightly damp is because one, um, if you go in with a dry brush into wet pigment, you will suck pigment up versus lay it down. So I don't want to change the intensity of my colors at all. I just want to stretch out the color um, so that it is completely filling that um, object so I don't have any weird edges. The other reason why I do it with just clean water and not pigment is I'm not trying to paint this myself. I'm trying to let the water do it's it's work, it's magic, um, because I want it to have that very kind of um, modeled or um, organic kind of look where when you go in and you paint directly with pigment, it's going to have a much smoother look. That's not what I was going for here. So in order to keep that intact, um, I'm just using just the tip of my paintbrush. I'm using... Um, what are they? Black, the black velvet line in the number two round brush. Um, and they have a great point on them and it makes it really easy to kind of get in there into the detailed areas. Um, so I can just go in and just kind of pull out or put down that water where um, I don't have it all the way out to the edge and then the water will kind of move on its own. With that said, uh, and you may have noticed I sped this up a little bit because I think it took me about an hour to paint it um, and we're not going to sit here on YouTube together for an hour. As much as I enjoy your company and I would like to think you guys enjoy the videos, um, ain't nobody got time for that. So with this um, flower right here, I believe the way that it was drawn was for it to be like a bud. So for this bud to be coming up out of these two kind of green leaves, I did not color it that way. The reason I did not color it that way is because um, I wanted more pink on my card. I felt like there was a lot of um, greenery going on. And so I just wanted to bring in more of that pinkish purple color. Um, speaking of colors, I haven't even talked about those yet. So for the center of my flowers, I used um, in Indian yellow. And then I added in just like a little drop of... Um, I'm not even going to try it, guys. Quin Gold. Um, and then for the flowers, I'm using a Quin Rose and a Quin Purple. For the leaves, I'm using Sap Green, that same Indian Yellow. And then to get a different look, um, because I'm all about making things interesting, like this is pretty much going to be the entire focal point of my card, minus my sentiment. Um, I'm also using um, Ultramarine Turquoise. Um, and putting that into some of the green leaves. I'm also painting in some of them just turquoise on their own. Uh, just so, you know, there's like a little bit of difference of color and it's kind of broken up. Um, but this was actually pretty relaxing. I feel like with, oh wait, let's talk about my mistake here. So remember how I told you I wasn't trying to paint it in. I was trying to let the water do its thing. When I painted those three purple flowers, I did not let the water do its thing. I painted them themselves. Um, I filled in all of the areas with the 
the color with that purple and I did not like the result. So sometimes I even have to like reel myself in because I want it to look a certain way. Like I said, I'm very controlled when it comes to this. It's hard for me to let go with this medium. Uh, but this technique is a really good way to do it because you just put the water down, drop the pigment, walk away. That's it. Like there's no like you don't want to overwork the area. And I think a lot of times when people are dissatisfied with their results for watercolor, it's because they have overworked it. Watercolor is its most beautiful when it's dry. And it's almost next to impossible to be able, unless you are psychic and you can foresee the future, to tell what that is going to look like um, when it is wet. They are two completely different entities. What it looks like when it is wet is not what it will look like when it is dry. So my suggestion would be, if you don't like something, do the same thing. Put the put the water in, drop the pigment, walk away. Because if you don't like it, you can always go back in and rework it. You certainly do not have to just leave it as is. Watercolor is very forgiving. It's a very malleable technique or um, medium. And so you can just go in and, and change those things, um, you know, as you want. So here for the largest flower, I told you you shouldn't work in two areas um, that are what that are right next to each other. Here, I didn't need any separation from the petals. It didn't matter to me if they all kind of blended in and did their own thing and maybe looked a little bit blobby because it has the center, which you can clearly look at it and your eye will determine that that is a flower. Um, and then also because it has the leaves around it. So again, your eye is going to tell you that's a flower. It doesn't matter how um, clean those lines are. So I didn't even worry about it. didn't even stress about it. Uh, this, anyway, what I was saying before was this was a lot more relaxing for me. Typically, I'm a little <laughs> shocking news. Um, yeah, alert the media. I'm a little bit uptight when I am doing um, watercolor painting. And I think all of us are a little bit guilty of that because we want it to, like, in our mind's eye, we see it looking a certain way. Uh, and you can definitely achieve that with a more controlled watercolor, which is why I prefer that method most of the time. However, um, I did find this to be substantially more relaxing to just kind of let it go, let the water do the thing. Um, when I was doing it, I was like, I am not even going to like this. Like, I'm going to paint this whole thing and I am not even going to be happy with the way that it looks. Turns out that's not true because I am happy with the way that it looks because I had to let it dry. So you can see like that flower up there in the top left hand corner, which is clearly still very, very wet, has a lot of dark pigment in it. Um, that thing looks like a hot mess right now. Come on. Like nobody's going to look at that and be like, I wish my flower looked like that thing up there. Um, but when it dries, um, it has, you know, very pretty um, pinks and purples in it, and it looks, um, it looks pretty. It, I mean, that's just, <laughs> not that I'm like, hey, my card looks so pretty, um, but it does. The, you know, the watercolor does um, dry back, and so just don't overwork it. Here I'm going back into that particular flower just to stretch out the color to the edge of the petals, but I'm not trying to manipulate the way that color is landing at all all. Sometimes it's going to be lighter, sometimes it's going to be darker. That's the beauty of watercolor. Just roll with it. So once I had um, the majority of the painting done, I'm going to start going back in and outlining some of these stems and um, what is that, like little foliage that it has going on there. This is... <sighs> I'm not saying, I'm not advocating for like super expensive brushes, okay? I'm not. Before I used these, I used the Ranger um, like multi-pack and I still typically usually link to that as a less expensive option. You just want to make sure that you have a paintbrush that has a good point on it. That's it. Uh, it doesn't have to be uber expensive. I do like the um, the, this, what, what is it? No, why can't I think? The um, Silver Brush Company. Oh, that was a long walk. Um, but I do like the Silver Brush Company. I've been using these brushes um, for quite some time now. I'm very comfortable with them. Uh, and it didn't, there wasn't a large learning curve because I think that they're good brushes. But there's lots of good brushes out there. So just make sure that you have one that comes to a good point before you start trying to outline things. The other thing is when you're outlining things. Um, and here you can see I'm doing these teeny tiny little berries. Um, I am doing this as a more controlled 
uh, watercolor. So I'm putting the pigment down and then I'm going back, rinsing off my brush. I am blotting off the bristles. You can't see because we're zoomed in super close here, um, but I'm blotting off the bristles and then I'm just going back in with a slightly damp brush because I did want those berries to be fine and uh, um, small the way that they are intended and drawn in the stamp set because it's pretty. So, um, but anyway, before you go back in and, and try to outline anything, you good point on your brush. And then also um, you want to make sure that you do not have a lot of water on your brush. So you're definitely going to have a higher concentration of paint and less water when you're doing those things. Um, just so that it doesn't get uh, like smushy, you don't have blurry lines, um, especially when you're doing something this tiny. Now, if you're working on a huge piece, which I mean, I, I'm a card maker, so I'm not like doing canvas or anything like that. Um, but if you were working on a huge piece, then you wouldn't have to have such a small brush because obviously your lines would be bigger. For the center of these kind of um, side view flowers, I did drop in a little bit of yellow and then I put in um, some quin pink and then just on the outside edges of those flowers, I did add in just a little bit purple so everything would kind of be consistent. At this point, most of everything is dry and that's when I, like I said, I'm going to go back in and do some of that outlining. I kind of switched between the ultramarine turquoise and the sap green um, just to, you know, for what made sense. If I did the leaves teal, then I outlined the stem in teal. If I did the leaf, um, you know, a more traditional green, then I outlined the stem in green. Um, so really just kind of depends on what you chose for your piece. Um, I like a lot of colors, but this would, would be very pretty in something, you know, much simpler or um, Copics. I know not everybody is a fan of Copics. Um, I have kind of branched out more into the world of watercoloring um, or colored pencils. Again, you could do this with any medium. I just decided to basically try to force myself to do something different. I wanted to add a little bit more to the centers of the flowers. So I went in with some, is it permanent brown? Transparent brown? I never remember the name of my brown. I should look that up. But anyway, I um, I went back in with that. I am going to um, go ahead and do some die cutting. This is the Hello Spring die. So it cuts an outline and the, um, the script word. Originally, I thought I was going to do it in pink because I wanted to mount the card on some Desert Storm cardstock. So um, I just, I had, I couldn't use it. It, it didn't look right. Uh, and then I messed around with doing just Desert Storm. I messed around with doing Bellum. Um, I, a lot of times with busier backgrounds, because I am more of a clean and simple card maker, I'll put a piece of Vellum over it uh, just to try to, um, you know, bring everything together. And I just felt like it covered up too much of that background. Like I spent all that time um, painting it. I didn't want to cover it up. So I didn't. I actually, what I did, and I would encourage you to do as well, uh, I went on Pinterest and I started looking at other people's cards that I know do uh, busier backgrounds and seeing what worked for them. And um, so basically I went and looked at my friend Giannis McCullough's uh, Pinterest. She's amazing, talented. Um, I will link to um, her YouTube channel and uh, her blog on my uh, personal channel. Um, but so I never, I didn't feel like I could put black with it because it was like super soft background. No, you totally, like she, I saw one that she did. And I was like, she's got black on it. It looks amazing. I'm doing that. Um, so huge shout out to, uh, to Yana. She's amazing. Super talented. Thank you for letting me know that I could put black on my Desert Storm cardstock backed card and it would look just fine because it looks just fine. So um, in the middle of that, you saw me fill in the um, the dot of the eye with uh, the just a white gel pen because in all of the die cutting I was doing when I tried 656 million different things of how I was going to put this card together, I lost it and I wouldn't recut another one because I'm lazy. Um, I'm also using the new sequins that we have coming out with this release, Neat and Tangle's new um, release. They're like champagne and pink. I love them. They're super pretty. I thought they'd look great on the card. So I put that on there with some glossy accents. And then that is the whole card. I would encourage you to head over to the blog if you're watching in the first week of March because there's lots of inspiration happening and lots of other new sets to see. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.